think this is a perfect uh, segue for the earlier discussions in terms of the use of drug-coated technology in the infrapapatial disease, and it's my pleasure today to present to you the six months data for the Latonix BTK trial. Uh, these are my disclosures. Uh, I speak on behalf of BARD, um, and I participate in the research. The study PIs uh, are uh, uh, Dr. Broadman, Dr. Garrity, and Dr. Mustafa. Um, there are three national PIs. The United States contribution was about 275 patients. Uh, Europe and Japan, 122 and 40 patients. Uh, this was a randomization in a two-to-one fashion where uh, 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 the drug-coated uh, group was double the uh, plain all balloon angioplasty group uh, using the Lutonix uh, over the wire 014 platform. And the clinical follow-up was at one month, six months, 12 months, uh, and 30, uh, 24 and 36 months. The safety endpoint for the trial, and I think I want to spend some time talking about the safety endpoint and the outcomes because of all the points that were made earlier in terms of the uh, use of drug-coated technology in the infrapapatial region, especially with the impact of trial. So looking at uh, any uh, freedom from any major adverse limb events, uh, all cause uh, preoperative death at 30 days, uh, amputation, uh, and by amputation we mean major amputation above the knee, I'm sorry, above the ankle, uh, and major reinterventions. Efficacy defined as freedom from composite, uh, above the ankle amputation, target vessel occlusion, clinically driven target lesion revascularization. If you compare both groups, the uh, drug-coated balloon group and the uh, plain old balloon angioplasty group, uh, no significant difference, uh, equal representation uh, among all um, groups. And also, if you look at the comorbidities, uh, also we had adequate represent representation uh, between both groups. Uh, interestingly, about 50% uh, or so in each group underwent a prior revascularization. If you look at the task classification, more patients in the plain balloon angioplasty arm had uh, 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 task A lesions, but not statistically significant, no difference between both groups. And the majority of the patients had a single lesion. The trial uh, protocol allowed for more than one lesion, but the majority had only one lesion. Um, the lesion length, it's interesting that, uh, you know, when we're presenting these data, everybody talks about the, re the relative to length of a lesion, uh, describing, uh, you know, this lesion length here is about 11 centimeters or so, but I would say, I would argue, a lot of physicians would say that 11 centimeter lesions are not necessarily long by any stretch uh, in terms of our practice. Those are relatively normal lesions. The average lesion length in the prime registry was about 25 centimeters for below the knee. Uh, also, I want to point your attention to the mean reference vessel uh, within the Latonix PTK trial, as the prior speakers has very elegantly pointed out. It is very important to look at the reference vessel and appropriately size these balloons, and I think that's a major contributing point to the efficacy of these devices, uh, where we have about 2.5 millimeters plus or minus 0.6 millimeters, which is, which is quite a departure from prior trials, I think. Calcification was noted within the groups, and severe calcification was at about 15% of the cases, and about 40%, 30 to 40% of the lesions were uh, chronic total occlusions. The majority of the lesions were in the anterior tibial artery. So if you look at the primary endpoint, which is the 30-day safety, uh, a freedom from uh, primary safety event at 30 days, there was no significant difference between both groups in terms of a safety per se uh, uh, between both groups. And if you look also uh, at the Kaplan-Meier, there is no significant separation at 30 days. If you look at the primary endpoint uh, in terms of a six-month safety, uh, it, it looks like there is a separation between the drug-coated balloons and the plain old balloon angioplasty. That's in terms of a composite endpoint, which favors the use of drug-coated balloons in this, in this trial. If you look at all-cause death between both groups, and again, this is a six-month outcome, but if you look at all-cause death between groups, there is no significant difference between both groups. 52% of subjects evaluated for 36 months follow-up, and there is no statistical difference at, at this point uh, in all-cause death at 36 months. If you decide, if we looked at the Rutherford class five patients, and by the way, the, the trial has been accepted for publication, the six months outcomes have been accepted for publications of general interventional cardiology, and uh, hopefully will come out in the next three months or so. But again, I wanna point out the diameter is about 2.4, 2.5 millimeters 
And uh, if you look at retro class five patients, the 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 trend um, in statistically significant in a statistical significant fashion favors drug coated balloons. This is a slight courtesy of Dr. Mustafa, but if you look at comparison uh, freedom at six months from major index lymph antipatation, target lesion occlusion, and target lesion revascularization, clinically driven. 73% uh, in the drug-coated balloon arm uh, versus 63% in the balloon angioplasty arm, which was statistically significant. Same thing when you evaluate it with the Kaplan-Meier uh, test. It would be interesting to see at 12 months do, do these, do these uh, uh, curves meet or they stay separated toward the end. But remember, we're looking at critical limb ischemia patients where wound healing and reintervention is very important. So in conclusion, primary safety endpoint was met between both groups. There is no significant difference. There is no signal toward a higher amputation rate, as a lot of us were concerned. By Kaplan-Meier estimate, at six months, there was no difference in primary safety between the drug-coated balloon and the balloon angioplasty arm. The primary efficacy endpoint at six months favors the use of drug-coated balloons, and uh, this was 85% versus 70%. Obviously, we're awaiting the 12-month uh, outcomes. Thank you.